All right, I guess I'm uh, I'm on. Cup of Joe with Joe. I think this is the last time on Proverb or excuse me, Psalms 37 and verse 8 is where we're at. And that's been a good bunch of verses to read. Um, you know, as we as we st sat down here and started this, he said, um, he, "This this is what he said." He said, fret not yourself because of evildoers, and be not envious of wrongdoers. For they shall soon fade as the, like the grass, and wither like a green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land, and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. For he bringeth forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who, who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. And in today's, refrain from evil. Refrain from anger. I'm sorry. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. We, uh, this is not my favorite subject because I, um, I know I am, uh, this is where kind of one of my family traits that uh, I'm not going to blame everything that I do on my, on my family heritage, but, um, the Sparkses have a kind of a history of, um, Let's just say a rather rough temper. Okay, no, that's needless to say, that didn't have to be said. We fight it all the time, all of all of us. Um, my daughters, as bless their hearts, um, I, if I would have been able to have gotten them to inherit anything, it would not have been that. Um, my grandfather was very um, was very prone to temper. My um, my dad would not even discipline us corporally, uh, even though he believed in it. He let mom do it because his dad was too rough. Uh, my dad told me one time, he said, um, he said, uh, traits like that are like a chain. Somebody has got to break a link and he chose to break a link and he chose to not be one of those that was propagating, uh, that and so he would not uh, he would not do that um but when we look at the scriptures and we look at ourselves and in, in what we um how we should act we find we find words uh that tell us that we are supposed to be um that that we are supposed to um, shun anger to shun our tempers to, I'm going to look up a, something in the book of James. I want to look up a word uh, here. Let me see if I can remember exactly um, how to bring this up. Um, in the in in the book of James, uh, it says that we are supposed to be careful because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That verse tells us that whenever we, whenever we act in a in a in a way that includes wrath, that there's no way we can truly do uh, what is right. Uh, that we end up um, not not accomplishing what we want to do. But accomplishing the things, if it's not a, if, if it doesn't have anything to do with the righteousness of God, if wrath, or uh, as the ESV puts it, uh, well, yeah, that means that I have to, I have to uh, do something first here. I have to come in here, and I have to do this, and then I have to take this, and I have to. Let me just bring this up. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. In the ESV, that verse said, "Quit, you dumb thing, Mike." I talk to my computer, so don't don't worry about me if I do. Uh, 
computers have a sensor behind them. I don't know if you knew that. And when somebody sits down and really needs to do something, you know, they're the they're 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 programmed to do just the opposite. Or <laughs> no, no. These, now you're seeing my frustration. What I wanted to do. See, it just it just did it to me again. Um, we don't have anything in us that does accomplish the the good things of God as long as we are in a in an angry situation. If you allow anger to come in and to start uh, bringing you um, a um, a activity, if you start acting within an activity that has a lot of anger in it, a lot of wrath in it, if you have a tendency as I do to lose your temper, um, it's best to understand what God's word says very plainly here is the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. If you look at, if you look at scriptures, it, it sounds more like this. Stop being angry. That's what that verse says. Don't lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Being angry about how God is or is not working in someone else's life, which is the direct context of this chapter, it does nothing but harm. It makes you angry. It frustrates you. You lose sleep. You lose uh, a, a, a smiling countenance. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work the rightness of God. And man, I can lose my temper and so can some of, the, some of you. So just look at, at this. Okay, another result of anger is bitterness. And so when you act in anger, you lose your temper and you act in anger, most times or not, other than not, you are, you are tempted to, to just say, oh, whatever, and bottle it up. And when you bottle it up, it boils out in other places. Okay, real quick. This this is just, you guys have me. So if, imagine you have a cup inside of you, okay? A cup inside of you. And it's got this nice pretty lid that you have developed over the years. And every time something happens to you and you feel like just swallowing it, it goes in the cup. And it goes in the cup and the lid back down. Goes in the cup and the lid back down. Pretty quick, it's too full for you to be able to get keep the lid down. So what do you do? Well, you get super glue and you glue the lid down. You get tighter with your emotions. You get you swallow it and you start expressing bitterness in within yourself. And what happens is if you keep that lid too tight, the bottom blows out and it starts getting all over everybody. It all of a sudden it has no purpose. It has no reason. It just lashes out. That overreaction, uh, we see it a lot of times in PTSD. That overreaction can come from the being uh, never dealing completely with things that have happened in your life. Mark it down. Things that happen in your life that have an, a, 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 a tendency to cause anger within you need to be expressed. Now then... There's good ways to express things and bad ways to, to, to vent that lid, okay? First of all, usually when the bottom blows out, the top blows off too. So now you don't have a lid, and now it's just puking all over everybody around you. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you start fashioning that lid back in a healthy way. In other words, you don't glue it down. You start fashioning that lid back and you start putting those emotions and those things back in that cup. But this time, instead, you intentionally go out and you do whatever you do to vent in a safe manner. I tell people, throw rocks at cactus. <laughs> throw, throw rocks at a fence post. Express that anger. Get it out. Get Go out and I guarantee you, do what Job did. Express your anger to God in a healthy way that you're not telling him, God, I hate you, but rather 
God, this frustrates me so much. And being serious with God and being real with God and allowing yourself to vent that anger off and allowing yourself in a healthy way, go shovel snow, go work in the garden, go take out your expression on weeds and you just forewarn your family first if they see you throwing weeds and throwing things that you're not hurting anybody, you're just out there expressing, stay away because I don't want to hurt nobody else. Trust God to know what you need most as a person so that you can express this in a way that's healthy. Quit judging others. Notice this context. He said for us not to judge those people who uh, aren't seeming to get what they deserve. And instead, you get all the trash in your life. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. Let me tell you what do. Understand that God knows. Understand that God is able. God is bigger than the problems you're going through. And he can take care of them. So he's going to know the best what you need. Quit judging others. It doesn't help. Start by judging yourself and saying, I have to stop this. See, it does need reins on the horse. It does need a bit in the mouth of, of, of these things. We take that mouth and we use a bit in it instead of using that as a weapon against somebody. So, cool thing to remember. Bible verses. To help us along the way. Let's look at some. Being angry does nothing but harm. Listen. Pro Psalms 4.4 4 says, Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts, on your own beds, and be silent. Does that sound like the verse we just looked at before? Uh, what was that? I think we just read in verse 7 the last time, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. What? To work. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in the way. Okay, oh, now I've got it. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath because they don't do anything but to harm others. Be angry and do not sin. Proverbs 14, 17 says, A man of quick temper acts foolishly, and a man of evil devices is hated. Psalm 145.8 says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger. We want some, uh, uh, somebody to, to, to use as an as a, as a, uh, example. Here it is. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Aren't you glad he is? Because my Bible says that God is angry against sin every day, and we're sinners. Therefore, if God is angry at sin, then I have to be glad that he's also gracious and, and, and full of tender mercy. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh answer stirs up anger, Proverbs 15.1. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, sound familiar? But he who is slow to anger quiets contention, Proverbs 15.18. Wrath is cruel, Proverbs 27, 4. Wrath is cruel. Anger is overwhelming. But who can stand before jealousy? Ephesians 4, 26. Be angry and do not sin and do not let the sun go down on your anger. Isn't that, man, there's a, there's a good way. Don't take it to bed with you. Don't. Matter of fact, get out in the shop and build something. My dad used to, uh, used to I, we straightened steel posts on an anvil. Usually that was when I'd done something wrong and he had me holding the steel post and he was hitting it with a sledgehammer. But that wasn't his anger toward me. That was him teaching me not to come in late at night, that kind of thing. Okay, so moving on, moving on. Ephesians 4, 31, 32, let all bitterness and wrath. I, By the way, I choose to come back to this one and we're going to deal with this one again. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. You want to know how to respond whenever we see that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God? Here it is right here. He says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and 
slander be put away from you. Along with all malice, don't, don't harbor that. Be kind. Be tenderhearted. Be forgiving. Forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. So, God in Christ has forgiven you. So when, I, so when we get together, here we are, we're, we're finishing this up and we're saying, okay, that's, that's the last of them. Uh, verse 8 is kind of the last of that list. Let's start putting it into practice. Learn to go out and vent anger before it becomes bitterness, before it starts harboring towards someone else. Just remember, bottom line, if you are angry at another person and you start seeing that they are treating you evil and they are doing this and they are doing that, mark it down. You've got the wrong person as the enemy. It's not that person. It's Satan behind them. The way they are treating you is what Satan wants to do to you. Don't worry about trying to straighten them out. Give them to God. You deal with yours by putting away bitterness and wrath and anger and malice and evil speaking and everything like that. All of a sudden, that's all put away. You're, you're free of that feeling. You've got it out of your system. You've gone out and you've, and you've gotten where nobody could be harmed Take a four-wheeler and go out in the, in the pasture by yourself and just scream, throw rocks, express yourself before God, crawl up into his lap then and hug into his robes and say, God, I, I, I'm so frustrated. I, I, these things are not working out right, God, and I don't... I don't want this in my life and pour it out to him. Guess what? Job was never chided for pouring his heart out to God. Job was chided when he went too far and started claiming God had anger and wrath and, and bitterness against him. And God says, well, wait a minute, stop. How come you're, do, how come you're doing this? So as long as we keep it in a healthy manner, you can say anything you want to God. Heavenly Father, we're going to close this study with a word of prayer saying, God, you are the one who we answer to. Forgive us of our anger. Help us to put it away. Help us to put away bitterness and wrath and all evil speaking and clamor. Let us just get rid of it. And Father God, I pray that you would take us right now and change us first and then we will watch to see our life change and it doesn't matter what our enemies are doing thank you for all you've done for us god bless you my friends i hope you enjoyed your coffee i did this subject is not very pleasant to me because i am exactly who i'm talking about this was for me you guys just got to listen God bless you.